Welcome to Genshin Impact one year anniversary. It's Abyss and in this video I'm going to talk about some tips and tricks that I learned along the way. Now if there's anything that I forgot or anything else that you would like to add, please leave them in the comments down below. The community here has been extremely helpful and I know you guys are going to be just as helpful in the comment section. Alright so let's get started. Okay, so before you dismiss an artifact, you want to level it up to level 4 so that you can unlock another stat. The one I have right now, I have attack in percentage, crit rate, and an energy recharge. So I have 2 out of 3 stats that I actually like to have on my artifact. I'm going to level it up to level 4 real quick and see what we're going to get. And as you can see, I unlock crit damage. So I end up getting 3 out of 4 stats that I actually want to have on an artifact. The energy recharge is not a bad stat, but I like to have at least attack in percentage, crit rate, and crit damage. If I can get those three out of four on my artifact, then I feel like this one is good to go. So you never know what you're going to get until you level it up to level four, unlock that bonus stat, and then see if this is something you can work with. Next, I want to talk about how some abilities have a short animation, and if you time this right, you can avoid taking damage. Here's an example of Aloy using her main ability, and as you can see, I'm not going to take any damage at all. So this is something that's good to know and just test out your characters that you like to use and see if they have that ability with a short animation and if you run into any kind of trouble, just time it right so you don't take any damage at all. Need cash fast? Well then head to the Northland Bank. Over here on the map just above that diamond icon is a bank that you can go into all the way to the back and to the left is a chest with 200k in it. Now this is something I'm extremely guilty of by not exploring enough and I could have used this early on. This is the chest right here, so just loot this and you'll get 200k. This is going to help you out if you're early in the game when you know money is a little tight. Also if you talk to the NPC in the front, you might have some pouches on you that you can exchange for cash too. This is depending on what quest you have completed. Now if there's any other locations where you can get cash fast like another chest or something, then please leave it in the comments down below. Next, I want to talk about continuing your combo or canceling your attack. Now, my main character uses the Claymore, and right at the very end, that last attack, it'll slam down on the ground, and there'll be a short delay before you can start swinging again. So what you want to do is quickly tap that dash button, and then you can continue your combo right away. This could be very useful if you just use your shield or you just down that enemy and you want to continue that combo. At the very end of that combo, quickly tap the dash, and then you'll be able to continue that attack. This also applies to canceling your attack. So if you're in the middle of your combo and you got to get out of there, hit the dash button and that'll cancel your attack. So the dash button can be very useful if you want to continue your combo or cancel your attack. Next I want to talk about the dash cooldown. So you can dash twice before there's going to be a short cooldown and then you can dash again. So in order to avoid that cooldown, you can dash twice, quickly switch to another character and dash two more times and then quickly switch to another character. You can dash a total of 8 times before you're going to have that cooldown. So keep that in mind, if you want to avoid that cooldown, you can dash twice, switch to another character, and then dash two more times. Next I want to talk about party setups and the different elemental bonuses that you can get. So when you're at your party setup and you press the R3, it's going to bring up a list of all the different kind of bonuses that you can get by setting up your party a different way. So I like to have my main party to have a different elemental character, but let's say for example you set up two pyro characters, then you can get that 25% extra attack bonus. Or if you're exploring the world and you're just looting chests and you want to have a faster movement speed or consume less stamina, then you want to set up your party a certain way, or maybe you want to double up on stats, two electric, two geos, and get two bonuses. Just go to your party setup, press the R3, and you can see the different stat bonuses that you can get. You can set up four different parties and switch to them quickly at any time. Next, I want to talk about our healers. So one of the most important artifacts that I found to have is the last one with the crown, and you want to have the stat on there that's called healing bonus. That's going to help you out a lot. But it's also important to know, like for example, Barbara, her healing will scale up depending on how high her HP is. Now it's slightly different for another character like Jean. Her healing will scale up depending on how high her attack is. So you gotta pay close attention to what's gonna scale up their healing. But it's important to note though, there are certain artifact sets that are really good for your healers, but that last artifact, the crown, you wanna get that healing bonus stat on there. I've noticed it helps out a lot. Next I wanna talk about unlocking your final talent. 
So in order to do this, you need to ascend your character to phase four. This is past level 60. So for this character right here, hers will give you an extra 10% attack bonus for 10 seconds when you pick up a chili pepper. This is actually pretty good for a sub character. So you wanna check out these talents and see if it's gonna be worth leveling up your character to 60 and beyond and unlocking that final talent. For this one, I definitely think it is since I use this character a lot. Now one thing to note is you don't have to go all the way to 70, you just need to ascend to phase four and that will unlock the talent. Now moving on to the next subject, after you just ascend your character to the next phase, you don't wanna max them out. Like for example, she can go to level 70 now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get her to level 69 and just leave it right there. Unless I am ready to ascend to the next level, but since I don't have all the materials, I'm gonna leave her one level short of max. You don't wanna go all the way max because if you use this character in your party, she's gonna gain experience why she's there anyways. So why have it all the way maxed out and not get any experience at all? So just leave it one level shy until you're ready to ascend to the next level, especially if they're in your party because they're gonna gain experience anyways and you'll save on the books. Next, I wanna talk about your ascension rewards. This is something that you have to backtrack and claim each one of them. So when I ascend it to the next phase, I assumed early on that this was automatically given to you, that you didn't have to do anything else. Once you went to the next phase, they're gonna give you that reward. But no, you have to go back and claim each one of them. So when I went back and claimed each one of them, I ended up with 20 extra just from going back and collecting on my rewards. It's just one of those brain dead moments of me of not going back and actually double checking and seeing if I got my reward. No, I guess you can say I was just looking forward and seeing what's the next level I need to ascend to and what the materials are that I need for that instead of going back and double checking because I've always had some of those fates in my inventory so I didn't really worry too much about it. But no, you gotta actually go back and claim all those rewards and you'd be surprised how many you actually have to go and claim. If you do exactly what I did and just completely overlook that, you might end up with an extra 20 of those fates in your inventory. So double check your extension rewards and make sure you claim every single one of them. Next, I'm gonna talk about your resin cap being at 160 and how you never wanna go over it. One of the biggest mistakes that I made early on is I would wake up in the morning, I would refresh it every morning and try to stack it up as high as I can. And the next morning I would stack it up again and when I got to a thousand, I said, oh, that's good enough, I'll just keep it there. That is the worst thing you can possibly do in a game. You wanna always keep it at 160 and below. When it's under 160 and as you're playing throughout the day, you're gonna automatically gain resin throughout the day. But if it's at max, you're not gonna get nothing at all. So you never wanna go over cap. It's one of the biggest mistakes that I made early on besides not collecting my rewards that we just talked about. So just make sure that it's always under 160 so that you'll gain some throughout the day. Next, I wanna talk about marking your calendar every six weeks. So when the game was first released, I just thought, okay, it's a free to play game, play it, that's it, nothing more to it. So I missed out on a couple of these events. So later on, I found out like about a month or two later that, hey, they're gonna be constantly updating the game and coming out with these events every six weeks. It could be like a new island, a new area. They could be giving you a free character or maybe a weapon that is a limited time during that event. So you wanna check every six weeks and see what's going on and what kind of new update they're going to bring to the game. So for example, the last update was on September 1st. So mark your calendar from six weeks from then and then there's gonna be another update. This is pretty impressive for a free to play game that they are constantly updating and bringing you new content every six weeks. And one of the last articles I read that they're gonna be doing this for at least four years. So there's gonna be a lot of events from now to then that you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out. Next, I wanna talk about your stamina while you're climbing. So when you run out of stamina and there's nowhere to go but down, you're probably gonna end up falling to your death. So there's a couple things you can do to avoid death. Number one, with the PlayStation, you wanna press the circle button to release and then press the circle again and that will do a dive attack. Typically with this, you lose about half of your health, which is better than dying. Number two, while you're climbing, you're almost out of stamina, you can actually eat a stamina recipe and it'll give you just a little bit of stamina back. It won't give you a whole lot, but maybe just enough to get you to the top. And last, while you're mid-air and you're falling to your death, just quickly press the pause button and fast travel somewhere else. If you're fast enough, this can avoid death. And the last and most important tip of them all, play whatever character you wanna play. It doesn't matter whoever you pick as long as you're having fun. 
All right, there you have it. Those are the tips and tricks that I've learned throughout the year. If there's anything else you would like to add, then please leave them in the comments down below. Other than that, hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel, and I will see you next time.